Hello and welcome to today's myminimaths.co.uk video tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at the Arithmetic 16 practice question 1. And before we start moving on to the questions, uh, the first thing we need to remember is it doesn't matter in which order we multiply a set of numbers or a group of numbers will always come out at the same answer. So for example, if we take three easy numbers, so let's take 1 times 2 times 3, we know that 1 times 2 is 2, and then if we times that by 3, we get a final answer of 6. If I swap that round, let's say 3 times 2 times 1, so 3 times 2 is 6, I times that by 1, and I still get an answer of 6. And finally, I could have 2 times 1 times 3, for example. So, 2 times 1 is 2, multiply that by 3, and again, exactly the same answer, we get 6 every time. So the first thing in the golden rule is when we're multiplying, it doesn't matter which order we do them in, we'll always come out at the same answer. And this is something that will become particularly important as you get older towards your GCSEs. So, on to question 1. It's 4 times, or multiplied by 6, times by 10. So again, if I take 4 times 6, so standard times tables, which is 24, then I multiply that by 10, so my number becomes one space bigger, so my 2 in the 10s moves over to the 100s, I get a final answer of 240. And next we're on to question 2, which is 9 multiplied by 2 times by 10. So let's try and set it out a slightly different way this time. So 9 times 2 is 18, standard times tables. And then we take this 18 and we multiply that answer by 10. And we get a final answer of 180. And again, just to show that it doesn't matter which order we can do it in, we could take 2 times 10 and multiply that by 9. So first of all, we have 2 times 10, which is 20. Then we're going to multiply it by the 9, and it gives us a final answer, exactly the same as before, of 180. And now onto question three. Now this one's different because we're missing one of the values to give us the answer. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this. So if I write out the question, we have something times five times 10, and that equals 350. Now, the first thing we could do is we could look at these numbers here. So five times 10 is 50 and say, well, 350 divided by 50 would give me 7. And that's my missing number. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, if I rewrite out the question again, is to perform the inverse and work backwards. So we could take 350 divided by 10 which gives us 35, then divide this by 5, which then gives us a final answer of 7. And again, once we have our answer of 7, we need to check it fits. So 7 times 5 is 35, times by 10 gives us our 350. So we know it fits perfectly in with the question. And finally, on to question four, which is two times seven times 11. And again, two times seven is 14. And then we're going to times that by 11 to give us a final answer of 154. And we can work backwards just to check our answer. So we have 154 and we divide that by 11. And it gives us 14. That 14 divided by 7 gives us our starting number 
of two. Thank you very much for listening today and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care.